All right, so let's get back into the modeling process. Now, what I want to do is create a nose from this point. We've got a nice basis for some eyes. They're not perfect, but they're also very low geometry, so tweaking them out should be a pretty easy task once we have some more landmarks of the face to work with. So, let's begin with a nose. <clears throat> now, I'm going to turn off my smooth just for a little bit here. And I'm going to add another row of geometry, like so. Jump to the side view, pull this forward. Looks like I still have proportional editing on, which is not necessarily a problem in this one case, but let me go ahead and make sure that's off. And then I'm going to just kind of start moving some stuff around. and then maybe pull these apart a little bit to get to kind of keep the bridge of the nose from being quite as sharp as it was just a second ago. Uh, let's pull these forward and get some nice averaging between those pieces. Pull this forward as well. I feel like we could probably get away with taking these edges here and here Let's go over to the front view and we can extrude these out like so. Grab vertices here and here and Alt M merge these together. Now in the side view, we're just kind of continuing the pattern. We're just going to let this sort of march on down the nose like so. Straighten this up a little bit. Now, I'm going to grab this one edge right here. Actually, hang on, let me check this from the side view. Let's keep going with two edges. So I grab these two edges, and I'm going to extrude forward to right above where the nostril begins. Grab vertices and just start to kind of shape out like so. front view, pull this out, pull this out as well, because we need to kind of go around the uh, the nostril. And now is the part where I think we're going to need to split off in two separate directions. As a matter of fact, we may end up needing another bit of geometry, another edge loop running down the front of the nose. Now don't be surprised if as you create prominent features of the face, especially free-floating ones like this, if you end up with a lot of tight geometry, like say here, right between the bridge of the, uh, at the bridge of the nose, in between the eyes, you could end up with a lot of vertical edges. Don't let that alarm you. We can close those off later. We can reroute them and feed them into the eyes. The cool thing about the eyes, even the mouth actually, is that we can run edges into the mouth or the eyes and they just terminate, as opposed to having to loop back over the top of the head, perhaps down the back or around the leg. You can easily, if you're not careful, make an edge loop when you're making a head that goes up over the top of the head, right down the back, all the way down the back, maybe goes all the way around the leg, around the other side of the foot, back up the other side, around the front of the body, and then maybe up the face. You have to watch out for that kind of thing. So, back over in the front view, things are looking okay. Here in the side view, things are also looking okay. I'm going to pull this bit of geometry back a little, I think, and bring in another edge loop. So control R, right about here. And just start to use that to create some curvature. Turn off smooth for just a moment. Okay, now in the side view, well that's crazy, let's pull that back a little bit. And we can already see how we can kind of make adjustments to the shape to line that up a little more nicely with the drawing. 
Let's grab these two edges here at the front of the nose all by themselves and I'll extrude them once and switch over to vertices and pull those back about like so extrude again and pull down to kind of where the nostril sort of begins switch over to vertices and straighten that up as well let's check this, the front view And then take a look here inside of perspective and see how stuff looks. So what we've done is we've kind of trimmed out the area where the nostril is going to come out. Now if we turn off smooth for just a minute, we can see we've got two vertices right here that look like they have a lot in common. Let's use that to our advantage and we'll just merge those together take a look in the side view we may not actually want to do that, let me undo that for now I'll pull these close to one another yeah we may want to take a slightly different route than that just for now okay now, I want to kind of surround these edges so they'll kind of go around the nostril. We may end up connecting those back up. I haven't quite decided yet. Like so many things when I model, I like to get the, the primary details in and then worry about which way the edges are flowing. So let's grab edges here, here, and here, and let's start to make some nostrils. I'll do this for starters in the side view. We'll just extrude these out. Go back to vertices. Over here in the side view. Check out the front view, and it looks like we could pull these all around a little bit. Hmm. I may want to handle that in a slightly different way. It's already a little different than what I did in the first class. Let me think for just a second. It might be better not to... Well, let me just roll with it. And if it doesn't work, I'll just re, uh, readjust the geometry from there. And try to keep it relatively simple. Actually, you know what? Hang on. Let me grab these faces. I'm going to change my mind because it's modeler's prerogative. I'm going to nuke these faces at least temporarily. Switch back over to edges. Grab these two edges here. And in the side view, I'm going to extrude these back and then adjust vertices to kind of line these up a little bit like so with the, uh, the septum edge and edge and we'll extrude these back now if we take a look in the front view obviously we have some adjustment to make so let's jump over to vertices and we'll do that Okay, I'm liking that a little better. Now I'll grab these two edges here and here, and in the front view I'm going to extrude these out and use these to start to form the nostrils.
Now we can do something very clever with the geometry here. I can grab here and here and just close those off with an F command. So let's just close off those faces. And start to work these around. Probably grab this edge and this edge. Let's extrude these out together. Now I didn't move them very far as you might have seen because now I can take these two edges and merge them. Let me go ahead and show you what this looks like in full 3D and kill out my smooth. You see we're starting to kind of create a surrounding hole that will become our nostril. Pull these up. Extrude. I'm going to right click scale these in a bit, and then I'm just going to start moving them up a little. Because then I can take these two uh, edges and just close them off, and now I've got a nice face that'll start to form back into the cheeks. And see, there we go. We're starting to get some nice shaping to the nostrils themselves. Pull this up inside the nostril a little bit, and maybe these as well. You can really start to pull these this detail really high up inside the nose at this point, and start to give kind of some some overall shape to the nostrils themselves, which is very useful. And let's kind of give a brief moment for people to catch up who are doing ready checks right now. All right. So we have the basis of our nose in there. We can, there's some changes I'd probably want to make to the geometry as we go. But I think this is a good enough place to start. And so at this point, my goal would be to try to start getting this connected back into the mouth area and get all of this connected to the eyes. Essentially, it's like you're building a mask one piece at a time. Now this, if we count off the number of edges we have here, we have like this one edge here at the top of the lip and another edge here at the underside of the nose. We can start off just by connecting those outright. That already starts to form a little bit of a lip, which is pretty useful at the end of the day. Now here what I want to do is grab edge and edge I can just connect those. It makes a triangle there. I know you can yell and scream, be like, oh, no, a triangle. Uh, we can split it off and break it into a quad later if we're really uh, just kind of hell-bent on fixing that. Or it's one of those things where we might not have to worry about it too much. I'm going to grab these edges here, hit Control e and do an edge slide, slide them over a little bit to make some room. So I can drop another edge here. Go ahead and round it out. It says Control R, of course, to drop that in. And then edges here and here. Hit F. Now that's getting a lot of blending. So it's going like really far from the cheek straight out to the nose, which looks a little bit funny. But that's okay right now. We're not going to stress that too much. Because what I want to do next is grab these two faces, extrude them back, We'll grab vertices here and here and merge them together. So it's starting to kind of make a loop that's radiating out from the nostril. As a matter of fact, that already gives me a point where I can make a knife cut here and here. Grab vertices 
and merge and just kind of even that out as a quad. If we take a look at the smooth, that's actually working pretty well. We can kind of push and pull the vertices. The nice thing about doing that though is that that gives us an extra row of vertices we can start to tuck back behind the nose for no other reason than to give us some creasing right back behind the nostril, between where the nostril meets the cheek and the cheek itself. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now, if we start to connect this down, we can grab edges here and here and just extrude these out. Grab vertices and start to kind of just form a shape from the front view that kind of starts to surround the shape of the mouth. Because in the end, what we're going to want to do is make kind of like a, a puppet style shape when seen from the front that goes from the corner of the nose out around the corner of the mouth. That'll be kind of our goal. But we also want to maintain this concentric loop of edges that's radiating out from the mouth itself. We're going to do that in a couple of different ways. So if I hit Control R here, I can make a split and then start merging these together. Pull these forward, take this vertex at the center, and if you pull that back, you get that nice indentation that takes place between the lips. Could probably grab this face here and extrude it. Grab vertices here and here, merge to last. Well, I mean, kind of. Some part of me tells me that I should probably be doing something like this. Let me see how that looks. Yeah, that does allow me some nice power to start branching kind of down inward, but let's. I don't know if I really want to focus on that just yet. Let me undo that. Just for now. Let's say I just want to focus on making these concentric rings out from the mouth. So we could start off just by grabbing edges around from there. Do an extrusion out, right click, and then just scale that out. You don't need to go very far. You're just giving yourself enough so that you can separate the detail and just start spreading this out from its origin out across the face. Then double check placement in the side view on kind of a vertex by vertex basis. Now, these two vertices, I would probably go ahead and just merge. And we've got this extra piece of detail coming down here from the nose. The way I would probably solve this, because I've got such a big gap in detail here, is just go ahead and add some more detail in, and we can go ahead and merge those. Ah, perfect. So now I can grab face, I'm sorry, edges here and here and hit F. Even if I want to, grab all the way from here to here and hit F. And then just split that. So just control R, split, and move these back away from each other for a minute just long enough to grab these two vertices and merge them.
And then I need to take just a minute and start cleaning some things up. So I mean like this gap in between my nostrils is just ridiculous. I and mean, obviously that's not going to work. So I need to start turning that into something a bit more respectable. So before we get too carried away and too far away from our subject matter, I'm going to start cleaning that up a bit. I can probably add a little more detail here just by running a ring right around the inside of the nose. So I'm going to start closing that off, like so. That's definitely becoming much easier to read. And I feel like we lost some thickness around the nostril here, so the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to make a knife cut that goes around the nostril. It's probably going to be a little hard to follow at first, but I'm going to close it off here at a triangle, as you can see. Grab vertex and vertex and just merge those to center. And then I'll start pushing these kind of up the nose. And all that did was just give me an extra edge here at the outside of the nose to keep things from getting so dangerously thin the way they were. I probably actually have extra detail here. I could probably go in and start deleting some faces that are way up here high in the nose, but I won't worry about that right now. Okay, so if we pull this down now, I think we're going to have a pretty good start for a nose. So we can just kind of walk away from this for a little while. There's st still some creasing and some tweaks we can make, but if we take a look from the front view, it's a pretty good start. We can maybe grab proportional editing and spread that out a little bit so it meets up with the drawing a little better. And take a look at the side view, and that's already lining up pretty well. So aside from needing to tweak out the nostrils, which I'm not going to waste too much more time on right now, that's enough for our initial geometry. Now what I want to do is move away from that entirely and start taking a look at modeling out some ears. So let's start off in the side view. This is where most of our detail for the ears is going to be. And I'm going to place my 3D cursor right out here at the outer edge of the ear, and then do the same in the front view. Just as before, I'll hit Shift A and add in a plane, turn off clipping, scale that down, and turn clipping back on. Now here in the front view, we'll rotate that around, and then jump out to the side view. Now I don't need smooth on for this. What I'm going to do is use the vertices here to just shape this into kind of the first section of an ear. We're basically going to make a chain of faces that go right around the outermost cartilage of the ear. Pretty straightforward. Now there is a neat trick to do this. I feel like the only reason this feature was ever added to extrude was just to make ears. But if you hold down control, you can just click your way out and make some nice extrusions that go all the way around and make a really good ear or at least a really good start for one anyway. Now, in the front view, this will be a little tricky to gauge, so what you're going to have to do is grab vertices, and the way I would handle this is probably with just proportional editing on. Just hit G, roll up your size a little bit, and just set this right on top of the ear.
then maybe turn off proportional editing and just do some little tweaks to line this up with that outer ring of detail for the ear. You don't need to overdo it, feel free to check your smoothing. Just kind of push and pull things a little bit, like so. I'm going to pull this down here, grab edges, and we'll just close that off. Now, from here there's all kinds of different ways you can approach an ear, but I'm going to show you a couple of tricks that I think make the process a little easier, at least, especially with these kind of simplified ears, what we have, uh, like what we have here. I'm going to grab this ring of faces, or I'm sorry, this loop of edges, and just hit F and fill that in with an N-gon. Now obviously it's not a good idea to keep an N-gon on such a model, and we're not going to be keeping this one. But it does kind of show that I need to grab some edges, maybe out here and in the front view, and just pull these out a little bit, like so. Now let's go back over to the side view and go to wireframe, also hide our smooth. It's just going to be in the way for now. Now I'm going to get my knife tool out, and starting here at this corner, I'm going to click, and then I'm going to click one more time for each one of these radiating edges. The only thing I'm going to do that's kind of interesting is when I get right out here to the inside, I'm just going to terminate it right here. Now, if you're trying to figure out what the method is to my madness, watch how I connect this with the knife tool. So this forms a little triangle. This one makes a quad. As a matter of fact, here's a faster way to do it. Hit Control tab V for vertex, and just grab vertex and vertex and hit F, and F, 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 and F. So it's a triangle, but it wraps all the way around and forms a quad at the very end. And these two vertices actually need to be merged. They should have been together at the start, but they weren't, so I'll just merge those together. Now, Take this new row of detail that you created, and you want to pull that inside the ear. So just hit G, and then I'll just middle mouse drag and pull that in an X. And the neat thing about doing this is now you can just kind of scale that outward uniformly and get kind of a nice crease. Now, if you see some weirdness happen like so, you need to double check a few things. First off, go to wireframe and switch over to faces. And in a lot of cases, you'll have these doubled over. Like here, you have this one face. We can go ahead and nuke this. We don't really need it anymore. So just hit X and delete faces. And in this case, I've got this one that's kind of folded over and goes all the way around. That's from hitting F. It's kind of buggy. I don't really like it, but it's just an extra face we can kill. And it looks like Blender didn't really like the end result there. So let me jump over to vertices and just see what happens. If I fill these in, it looks like it doesn't really like that either. Well, let me see if I can force it. Again, these are just kind of uh, kind of like bugs for working with B-Mesh. But let me see if I can work around them. So if I reconnect these by hitting F over and over. Now let's just see if I switch over to edges. If I fill, yeah, I can fill these in now, and that solves the problem. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now if you grab vertices and double check your smooth, you can turn this into a nice little ridge at the inside of the ear just by kind of exaggerating how far out it expands. But now I'm going to grab this loop of edges at the inside. I'm going to extrude it, right click because I don't really want it to move, and I'm going to scale it down to a little hole. I'm going to move this hole toward the front inside of the ear and then inward quite a ways. And you can see what that looks like here in 3D space. And then just one more time like so to make a little tube. Then grab the this new that first extrusion you made. You can just hit control R and you can add detail as you like to create further ridges in the geometry.
So just hit Control R again, and this time I'll pull to about here, and this time I'll pull it down to create a little bit more of a predominant ridge. And if we take a look at smooth, we have the beginnings of a pretty nice little basic ear. Maybe add a little bit of thickness out here, like so. Okay. Now, we need to add some actual thickness to the outside of the ear as well. So now what we're going to do, switch back over to edges, let me hide off my smoothing again. I'm going to start up here at the very top of the ear and then hold down control and come all the way down here to the bottom. Oh, I just need to get all the way across the back of the ear, about like so. Hit extrude and then extrude this in to add considerable thickness. It's easy to overlook that but you don't want to. Then extrude again, right click, and scale down. And that kind of completes the overall thickness of the ear. If I pull that in a little bit and show you the smooth, you see how it's starting to kind of create the back of the ear. Now all of this needs to blend back over into the sides of the head. So we have a little bit of work to do, a little bit of cleanup. I'm gonna grab edges, edge and edge, and just hit F and close that off. vertices. Let's go ahead and pull this up a little bit. Edge here. I'll go ahead and show these without the smooth on. So let's see, if I grab this vertex, maybe pull that out a little bit. Go to edges, grab this edge here and this edge here and hit F. So we close that off. It does look a little weird at first. It will. But that's because, and even on your own ear you'll see this, you're going from just the flat side of your head to this ridge which smoothly folds into the side of your head. It kind of flows and so we're creating that flow right now. Now if we grab this edge loop, we can extrude this. I would right click and just scale this down a little bit. But then we're going to do some fun stuff. Let's go ahead and move it inward toward the inside of the head. But then here at the front of the ear, we'll start to fan it out. And this will start to become the side of the head that moves its way out toward the cheek. But back here, it'll allow for that nice gap between the ear and the actual head. So you feel like you could reach out and actually pinch the ear. We'll grab that and do it one more time, extrude, and then just scale up uniformly. And you can see that we have some adjustment to make to line this up with the side of the head, but we now have a nice shape to begin the actual shaping of the ear itself. Now, really my goal for today was to get us through the primary features of the head, being the mouth, the nose, the eyes, and the ears, so that in the next class we can get these all attached into 
the remainder of the head, get that attached into the neck, and then time permitting, we can create kind of a, some shapes for the hair. But this is really about as far as I wanted to push things today. So things did go a little bit faster than I generally expect them to go, but we've, we've gotten kind of close to our two-hour mark. So are there any questions up to this point about the modeling process? If you have them, it would be a good time to throw them in now. About anything we've done so far. All right. Well, then, I think that's going to go ahead and wrap up class for today. I want to thank all of you for being member sponsors and for supporting these live classes. And I will catch you all next week when we wrap up our character's head. So thank you all very much, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.